how do I use this thing? Oh, All right, thank, thank you. That's much better. I have called this meeting to give you all some very sad news and also some very happy news. First, the sad news. We all know we're facing tough times because of this Winona virus. Sad times indeed. Wait, wait. Hey, hey, hey. Did you just call it the Winona virus? What? It, it's not called the Winona virus? <laughs> Sally thinks it's called the Winona virus. What? Do you think it was named after country music sensation Winona Judd or something? Uh, no. Um, well... I thought maybe it was to encourage us to all that love will keep us together. You know, she has that song, Love Can Build the Bridge, and uh... It's not Wyona. It's Coronavirus. Corona. You don't know nothing, Sally. Oh, that's it, <laughs> Billy. You're <laughs> muted. There. There. How do you like that? All right. Sorry about that, gang. Like I was saying, we all face tough things because of the Coronavirus. And that means we can't even have the Easter together with all the kids. And we were going to have that big musical not puppet show number two with all of us. I know, I know. It's very, very sad. But I've got some good news, too. So, so, Billy, what do you want, Billy? What does that sign say? Please let me say something. <sighs> okay, Billy, I'll unmute you for just a second to say it. There you go, Billy. What is it that you want to say? <clears throat> Thank you. What I have to say is this. Sally's breath smells like worms because Sally eats worms. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Oh, yeah. Ah, it's right. It's right. It's right. Really? Oh, it's right. 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 Now, where was I? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We might not be able to be in the same room because of this coronavirus, but there will be family games and stories, songs. Man, it will be it will be fun for the whole family to watch. And then, love can build a bridge. Peace out. Are you upside down or am I upside down? Let me try. Maybe I can see you better. Oh, but then that'll kill my neck. I know. What if you take your TV or your computer and you flip it upside down?
No, probably better not do that. Your moms and dads will kill me if you break something. Oh well, I'm upside down still, but that's okay. We're not gonna let it stop us from celebrating the most mind-blowing event of all of history and humanity. That's right, my friends, it's Easter, and it's a perfect time to talk about humility. You see, humility is when we put other people first ahead of what we think that we deserve. And that is exactly what Jesus did. He put all of us first, and he even ended up getting what he didn't deserve. But he did it for you and for me. And now he's alive, and that, my friends, is something worth celebrating. So I want you on your feet, and we're going to get our worship on. John, I've got a question. What is it, Brandon? No, no, I'm asking the question. Fine, say the question. Why do we paint Easter eggs? Because it's easier than wallpapering them. Oh! <laughs> hey, did you hear the one about the lady whose house was infested with Easter eggs? I did, but she's fine now. You don't say. Yeah, she called an exterminator. <laughs> an exterminator! <laughs> Hey, that reminds me, how does the Easter Bunny stay so healthy? I'm guessing a steady diet of fresh greens and vegetables. That and exercise. <laughs> hey, speaking of the Easter Bunny, do you know how much he gets for every basket he makes? How much? Two points like everyone else. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. I think we're going to have to stop doing this pretty soon. Why, because the yolks are so bad? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I'm getting dizzy. I'm, I, we're upside down. Oh. Uh, <sighs> we need air. <sighs> I need air. <sighs> I can't see. <laughs> Gotta wipe off my glasses. The Bible. It's 66 books of history. 
Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been making plans to silence Jesus. The things he said and did challenged the way they had always lived. He was upsetting the world as they knew it. It is better if one man dies for the people than if the whole nation is destroyed. Then one of Jesus' closest friends, Judas, betrayed to the religious leaders where Jesus would be praying after the Passover meal. The leaders sent soldiers to arrest Jesus, and he allowed the mob to take him. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. As Jesus was tied up and led away, Jesus' closest friends scattered, though Peter and John followed at a distance. What was it like for them? Try to imagine for a minute that you're Peter. Only hours before, Jesus told you. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. And you, Peter, protested that you would die before deserting. But now Jesus has been arrested. And if you get too close, they might take you too. So you trail along like a stray dog as soldiers haul Jesus inside the home of the high priest. What's happening in there? The servant at the door frowns as she peers at you. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? I am not. You're ashamed to lie, but what good will you be to Jesus if you get arrested too? You huddle close to the fire in the courtyard as voices float through a high up window. What's this foolishness you've been teaching? I didn't say anything in secret. Ask the people who heard me. They certainly know what I said. You feel sick. Now they've taken Jesus. You know nothing will stop them. Someone else asks whether you're one of Jesus' followers, and you snap. No, I'm not. Minutes later, another man asks whether he saw you in Gethsemane with Jesus. Your stomach churns. Nope, not me. You realize you have denied Jesus three times, just as he said, and all you can do is stagger to your feet and run away weeping. Now, imagine you're John instead of Peter. Somewhere in the chaos, you've lost Peter. So when soldiers haul Jesus away to the Roman governor, all you can do is follow, alone. From the back of the crowd, you witness the terrible drama as the governor Pilate brings Jesus out. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes. Pilate takes Jesus away for questioning. You can only pray that he sees through all the lies and stops this madness. You're horrified when Pilate brought Jesus out again, battered and bruised. I find no basis for a charge against him. No, crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate hands Jesus over to the soldiers who force him to carry the heavy beams of his own rough cross. You know where they are going. Golgotha. It's a hill outside the city. As in a bad dream, you force yourself to follow. Along the dusty road, you find Jesus' mother, Mary, her sister, and Mary Magdalene. None of you can speak. You arrive at Golgotha in time to see soldiers nail Jesus to the wooden bars with heavy spikes and raise the cross up high. You strain your eyes to read the sign placed above Jesus' head. King of the Jews. You nearly choke on dust and grit. You've seen Jesus do amazing, powerful things, and yet he's allowed himself to be taken and battered. You glance over and see Mary sobbing, so you place your hand on her shoulder. When you look back up, you see Jesus watching his mother through the pain in his eyes. Dear woman, here is your son. Jesus looks directly at you, 
eyes filled with love. Here is your mother. Yes, Lord. You are overwhelmed to know that Jesus trusts you to take care of his own mother. But the terrible truth sinks in. Jesus knows that he will die. He's planning on it, just as he's been saying for weeks. A short time later, you see him lift his gaze to heaven. It is finished. Then he bows his head, and you can see the life leave his body. All the air seems to leave your own lungs, too. You thought Jesus was God's chosen one. How could he be dead? Now, as we move ahead, imagine you're Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' close followers. Unlike so many others, you've dared to stay there, at the cross. And once Jesus is dead, you dare to follow the men who take his body for burial, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. A garden tomb. The evening has faded, and it's now the Sabbath. You want to honor Jesus by anointing his body with spices, but it will have to wait until the Sabbath is over. So you stay hidden indoors until early Sunday morning, then you make your way through the dark streets. The stone. What will I do about the stone? As you arrive, you recall that a heavy stone was rolled to block the entrance of the tomb, but now... It's gone! You gasp as you peer inside the tomb. Gray light reveals. <gasps> it's empty! Heart pounding, you race back through the streets to the home where the disciples are staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. You can see the shock in Peter's face. John gapes, and then they both begin to run to see for themselves. At a loss, you follow slowly, weighed down with exhaustion and confusion. When you reach the garden, you see Peter and John ahead, trying to make sense of it. You hang back as they leave again. What more is there to say? As the first rays of dawn light up the garden, you reach the tomb. Tears spill down your face as you bend to look inside once more. Two figures in radiant white sit where Jesus' body lay. You can't even begin to think what this means. Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they've put him. You turn away to catch your breath and find another man standing right there. At first you think Peter or John has returned, but it's not one of them. Maybe it's a gardener. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Mary. The moment he speaks your name, you see, you understand. It's Jesus. Teacher! You fling yourself at his feet because there isn't anything else you can do. Gently, he touches your shoulder. Do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You rise to your feet, still weeping but your tears are full of joy. You start to run again because you can't wait one second more to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus chose to face death for those he loved and now he's defeated it. Jesus is alive. It's the best news ever for everyone across all time. Well, there's a lot of things that are upside down about this story, like, Jesus being beaten and crucified when he didn't even do anything wrong. Or then Jesus dying and then coming back to life because death could not defeat him. That was even more upside down. And I'm still upside down right now. But hang on, that's better. Well, here's the one thing that I want you to remember today. And that is Jesus put us first. Jesus put us first by dying on the cross so that our sins could be washed clean. He put us first as he rose from the dead so that we could have a relationship with God. How about you? Have you put Jesus first in your life? 
If you haven't, today is the day to put your trust in him. You see, the Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our hearts that he died on the cross and rose again, that we are saved. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you came to this world and that you died for me. I thank you that you have the power to conquer death and that you can take away my sins and that you can wash me white as snow. Jesus, I want to put you first in my life above everything. I love you and I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time today, be sure that you tell your moms and dads and tell them to send me an email or give me a quick call and let me know too so that I can celebrate with you. Do you know that the Bible says that when anyone becomes saved, that all of heaven throws a huge party? Well, today we're throwing parties all across our world celebrating that Jesus is alive. So let's get on our feet and sing another song. Well, that about wraps up another Sunday Home Connection. But before we go, I bet you're just dying to know who won our Pillow Fort Challenge. Drum roll, please. And the winners are Xander and Caden Jameson. You can expect a gift card in the mail this week. Oh, yeah. And for our next challenge, here's what I want you to do. Gather all of your peeps, that's right, your family, and I want you to go outside and take 
an Easter family photo. You can dress up if you want, you can be casual, you can make it silly, just however you want to be creative, be sure to do that and post it on our Crossroad Kids Facebook page and I'll announce the winner at next Sunday's Home Connections. I love you, have a great family fun day. Happy Easter friends, see you next time. you know